Hey, it's Cody. So we're uh, about to take off here. Um, I've got you strapped into the seat next to me. I'm going to show you what it's like to pull one of these bad boy fifth wheels. All right, so first we turn the truck on. We wait for it to warm up. We're running a 2012 Ram 3500 Laramie with the uh, Cummins diesel engine in it. So you got to treat it right so that it treats you right. So we're we're turned on, brake off, we're all disconnected, and uh, let's go up to the drone and see what it takes, see what it looks like. All right, so we're in position now, and the drone should be following us, so this will be super cool to see how this works. Just wanna pull out real slow, and remember there on the left side of the screen that the back end of that trailer has a long swing on it, so you gotta be real careful See, I'm starting to turn here. You see that back end is kicking over. It's kind of a good thing I'm using the drone. So that way I can see the uh, utility post there at the rear of the trailer. So I'm gonna straighten out just a little bit here. Clear that utility post without running into that bush. Bam, okay, we're good to go. So now I can swing out. Nice and slow and easy. Gonna watch my right side on the clearance there. Looking good. See how Mr. Drone follows me up there. Everything's looking good. Just gotta check your mirrors a lot, take your time. No point in rushing it. Okay, it doesn't look like the drone's tracking, so I'm gonna readjust it here. There we go. Okay, hopefully it'll follow me out of here. Doesn't look like it's going. One more time. Go! There we go. All right, we are good to go. Gotta watch out for those pedestrians. Remember to take your turns nice and wide. Check your mirrors, watch out for kids. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and land this drone before I run into trouble. All right, good, so we've got the drone back and we're still in the process of pulling out of here. I'm just gonna do some basic checks, gonna check my lights, I've got lights on the trailer, I'm gonna test my brakes, grab the controller down here and just give it a little nudge to make sure that the brakes are working. And 
I forgot my checkout card, so they might not be too happy about that. All right, we're checked out, we're good. Now, it's amazing to me how narrow they make some of these passageways in these RV parks, you know. These people with these giant fifth wheels come up and there's just barely enough room to squeak through the exit point without scraping your RV against the side of something, so. What's cool about this is I've done some pretty sweet upgrades to this truck. So like I said, I've got a 2012 uh, Laramie 3500 Dually. And some of the cool things about this truck are the fact that it has some great comfort features, which is good for a long haul on the road. Uh, it's got a DVD player in the back for the kids. So after hour after hour of driving around and they're like, how much longer is it? You can just put it in a DVD and watch a movie and they're totally cool with that. You're always just checking your mirrors for clearance because you don't you don't want to stray over that line because these trailers cheat. If you know what I mean by that, they uh, they'll cut over the line, and it's easy to sideswipe traffic. But anyway, uh, one of the cool performance things that I did to this um, with the 2012 is the last year that that Dodge made these trucks before switching over the Cummins to the diesel exhaust fluid. So I had the, I forget what you call the EGR, the recirculation system where it recirculates the exhaust through the engine. And what I did is I deleted that. I pulled that off because it's really bad for the engine to leave that on. And I pulled the exhaust system out of it. I pulled all the catalytic converters out. So this thing has really good um, airflow through the engine and I also I don't know if you can see right over here on my dash there's a little there's a little readout and what I've done is I've chipped the engine so I've deleted all of the factory settings on it and I went from a 350 horsepower stock engine with a, to an adjustable tuner so I can run it at the stock settings if I want to but uh, the, the tuner allows me to go up to uh, 550 horsepower, which is pretty pretty sweet for towing. So, but in order to do that, you have to install these gauges over here, a boost gauge and a temperature gauge, because you can't, you can't delete all the factory stuff and modify it without adding some extra gauges, otherwise you're going to uh, blow up your engine. So we're just winding up this hill right now, taking her nice and slow. I'd love to get the drone out and get a shot right now, but I don't think I could. All right, we get back on the road, I'll check in with you and give you some more uh, what it's like to tow one of these things down the, down the highway updates. All right, we're back. Uh, we're at the top of the hill now, pulling out from the RV park, and we're about to turn on to uh, Washington 28, Highway 28, and we're right here on this uh, this tricky corner. Because uh, it's tricky, I'm sorry, <laughs> I totally spaced out there and watching traffic. It's real tricky because there's a lot of traffic. So you gotta make sure that uh, you give yourself plenty of time to pull out, because even though we're amped up in the performance mode on the Mini Max tuner, um, it still takes a long time to, to get up to speed. So when you're when you're towing, um, especially when you're you're towing in a performance mode on a on a deleted and chipped vehicle, um, your pyrometer is your most important gauge. Um, that's that's an add-on to the to the delete. Um, right now, I'm running at my my exhaust temperature on the top end of the engine is a thousand degrees. And your maximum limit that you don't want to go past before you really run into some big trouble is uh, is 12 uh, 1200. So I'm running it up towards the max, which is is totally fine because it uh, the engine picks up power and picks up momentum, which is great for your great for your haul. And I'm running an automatic, which I really like because I I don't like shifting gears in a truck. I love slamming gears in a car, but 
it's uh, not quite as much fun when you're towing. So um, the, the automatic transmission on this particular model has an extra 100 pounds of torque which is really nice for towing a heavy load, especially when I'm running an extra 200 horsepower on the engine above what the factory, you know, intended it to do. So, um, now I'm picked up to, I'm at the highway speed doing 55 and my pyrometer's backed off to 85, or uh, to 850, which is about where it'll stay for cruising. Um, you just wanna watch that real close if you're going up hills. Um, the, the reason why I like the automatic is because I've got my push button transmission shifting on the on the shifter right here so I can just press a button to drop down a gear um, the the factory tuning for the transmission the shifting intervals isn't quite where I'd want it so um, I, I have to I have to downshift a little sooner than the than the engine otherwise normally would just to uh, to keep the engine speed and the momentum of the vehicle up when you're when you're going uphill. So uh, other than that, there's not much to it. Just uh, keep your eyes on the road, stop looking at the camera, stuff like that, and uh, drive safe. Hey, checking back in with you real quick. So uh, we're driving keep through the the little West. town of Wenatchee, Washington, and um, just thought I would talk about what it's like towing this thing in a city at the traffic circle if uh, the navigator will stop interrupting me here but um, just want to you know remind you that you got to make sure that you're always paying attention to what's going on around you you're looking around making sure that uh, there aren't any cars doing something stupid because people for whatever reason don't realize that you're towing a 42 foot long monster behind you and you can't stop on a dime and you can't zip through traffic like they do in their little Priuses and whatever. So um, just make sure you drive safely and be aware of your surroundings and try to know your route before you hit a city because sometimes the lane changes are fast and um, don't try to drive and tow your RV the same way that you you drive your car, okay? Give yourself a lot of extra stopping room when you're coming up to a light like I am right now. We're coming to stop here. Um, so I can actually roll up to the stop point because I'm already slowed down and I have my vehicle under control. And if you can't, if you, you know, are coming up and you have a real quick lane change or something, um, don't be afraid to just put on your flashers, slow, slow down, um, you know, don't be a traffic hazard, but, you know, don't be afraid to assert the size of your vehicle when you're in traffic, because if you don't, you know, kind of make people respect you, they're not going to respect you when you're on the road. They're just going to take advantage of you and be like, this guy's an idiot, he doesn't know how to drive, and go right around him and mess up your day. So don't be afraid to assert your presence on the highway in a responsible manner, if you know what I mean, okay? So we're almost through Wenatchee. Um, I'm gonna check my navigator, speaking of that. And uh, we're on track and I'll see you soon. Hey, checking in with you one more time. So I was hoping that I'd be able to uh, get the drone out and show you what it looks like to park this this big thing, but unfortunately, um, all the trees around here just uh, didn't didn't make that a, a good mix. So um, gonna have to have to do that on a separate video. But I want to show you something back here real quick. Check out these mad parking skills. So you see right there, man, there's only like an inch or two to spare. So uh, not many people can do that. But uh, if you've never towed trailers before, I don't recommend that your very first towing experience is a, a 42 foot long fifth wheel. But uh, I've been towing trailers for 12 years now. So uh, there, was, there was a little bit of a learning curve to it, but nothing that I, I couldn't get used to after a little while. So go ahead and check back in with us. I'll post some more videos and show you what it looks like to park this thing. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot.